Good morning, everybody. It's so good to see you guys this morning. It's going to be a great day. Amen. If you are visiting today, we just want to say thank you for choosing Living Word this morning. If you're watching online, just leave us a prayer request or a comment, and we will get back to you. What a great day it's already been this morning. I'm telling you, the Lord is in the house this morning. Amen. It is going to be such a great day. I'm so excited. We don't have Brother Leo, but we've got Brother Frank. Come here, Frank. He's going to open us up in a word of prayer because we want to get going this morning. Good morning, church. Let's pray together, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you so much. And I thank you for every single member here this morning bringing us to Living Word Baptist Church. Lord, I pray as a church we will meet the needs of all of the people that are gathered here today, Lord, and that we will honestly come to you and submit ourselves for worship and prayer this morning. Lord, help us to be humble and earnest in our desires to seek you today and help us to, to really listen to the word, Lord, as it's preached and that we might gain something, that we might learn something, that we might have something changed in our lives because we heard the word of the Lord. Lord, we love you. Your grace is so abundant in our lives and we thank you for that. We thank you for looking over us, protecting us. We thank you for bringing us here today. Lord, I pray as we listen to this sermon this morning, Lord, and as we worship you, that we will do so in such a way that's pleasing to you and in such a way that you receive all the honor and glory. Thank you, Lord. We love you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Stand if you are able this morning, and we are going to start worship. Open the eyes of my heart. Mm. start a service this morning. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift 
to worship. That's what we do when we come here. It is such an honor to be here. And, and everything that God does for us, this is our chance to say thank you. That's what this worship is. Thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives each and every day. Amen. And I would like to just expand on that a moment. <laughs> come on now. I, Preach it. I just have to tell y'all Satan will do everything he can to keep you from coming to mm -hmm. church. This morning, Tim leaves before I do to get here and do what? I don't know. He could be going to the donut shop. I don't know, but he says he has to leave her. So, come on. I back out of our driveway and start around our alley, and my car will not turn. There's no, it was like the wheels were stuck. I don't know, but it, the power, it was like driving a car with no power steering, which I've done many times, but it was worse than that. So, my neighbor. Let me borrow his car so I could come to church. But I just want you to say, or to know, for a minute, I said to myself, I'm just not going to go then. If I can get this car lent back around to the front, I am not. I, and then I thought, shame on me, man. I should, if I have a means to get there, if I, I could call called an Uber. Mm -hmm. And I'm not above doing that. But it put things into perspective. There are people going through so much more right. than a broken car to keep me from coming to church. Mm -hmm. I you know, and I, we all need to be mindful of that. It is a privilege to get to come to church, and it's an honor, and it's something that I take for granted that, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll just go to church on Sunday. There could come a day when we can't come and worship. They'll try to keep us from worshiping, and we can't, you know. I've said all that to say, I'm glad y'all are here, and I'm glad I'm here. Amen. And Amen. Satan didn't win. Okay. <laughs> and donuts. Oh.
said enough and we'll have the invitation in a moment. <laughs> the short sermon. <laughs> Your bed in our lungs, so we pour. 
this morning. Amen. That's how we praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't it a good day to be in the house of the Lord? I know some of y'all got fishing on your mind because the weather's so nice outside compared to last week. It was cold and rainy in here. Not in here, but out there. And uh, today, boy, it's just so nice. So you know what? I'm going to tell you a fish story today. We're going to talk about Jonah. Isn't that fitting? That's a good little introduction right there. Hey, uh, real quick, we got a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, welcome to church. I see a lot of visitors with us this morning. Thank you for making Living Word Baptist Church your place of worship. And we are so delighted that you are here today. In fact, we're so delighted that if you don't mind, if you will text LWB Guest to 84576, we'd love to have you uh, let us know your name and your phone number and your email, and we'll email you at midnight and call you at midnight and just really wake you up from sleep. No, we won't do any of that. We will update you from time to time of what's happening in the church and what's taking place, and it's just a good way to get you involved and let you know more about our church. All right, a uh, couple of things for the ladies, all right? So Tuesday, the ladies, you're invited to go to Denton to the Zara Coffee and Events, and they're having a free lunch. I know if this was for the guys, we'd all be there. So women, uh, you're invited. This is between 12 and 1 o'clock, just one hour. And you can see Amy Burns. Amy, raise your hand right over there. Amy is uh, uh, kind of overseeing the women's department, and she will get you uh, all the information that you need for that. And also, she's excited because we have a new Bible study starting this Wednesday night. On 1st and 2nd Timothy, so make sure you see uh, Amy before you leave this morning and get enrolled in that, and she'll get you all the information that you need. But that's going to be a great Bible study, 1st and 2nd Timothy. So, um, All right, so this morning we've got a couple of our workers that are out. So uh, Amy, why is everything about Amy today? <laughs> Amy Burns, she's, she's keeping our kids. She's supposed to have some help with Eve, and she's out sick this morning, so... Uh, if we've got any children that would like to go back to Children's Church, Amy's going right there. 
and we can, we can get her some help as well. All right, all right. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning, and let's invite the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts as we surround ourselves by the truth. Um, I have one goal, one purpose for you to this, this morning, and that's just to preach the truth of God's Word. And if we steer from that, you might as well get up and leave right now because you're just you're here for no purpose. But the purpose of being here is to receive the truth and the full truth of God's Word. So let's pray and let's invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Lord, we're so thankful that we can come into a, a house of prayer such as this, this sanctuary, this place of worship right here and lord we can sing to your name we can praise your name we can thank you for all that you've done for us and lord as we open your word now i pray god that you will speak to our hearts you will reveal who you are to us that you will open our hearts and our minds to receive what you have in store for us and father i pray that you will answer some of our prayers today lord that you will encourage us to dig deeper into prayer with you. So, Father, help us now. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so for the next few weeks, I'm beginning a new series of sermons, uh, and, and we're going to be looking at different prayers, different prayers in the Bible. And so this morning, we're going to start with the first one that just comes uh, to my heart, and that's the prayer that Jonah prayed while he was in the belly of the fish. Anybody ever been in the belly of a fish before? Well, that, it, it, it stinks. Let me just tell you. It's not the greatest place to be. So we're going to put ourselves in Jonah's shoes this morning. And we're going to be looking at the last verse of chapter 1. And then we're going to read all of chapter 2. And we're going to discover uh, some things about prayer. And that's, that's my goal for the next few weeks. Is to really show you how important prayer is. And how we as Christians, we need to develop a deeper walk with God. And the only way that we can do that is beginning with prayer. And it's important that we all pray. And I, I know sometimes people say, what's, what's the purpose of praying? I'm going to show you, especially today. I'm going to show you some reasons why we should pray. I'm going to show you through the scripture how important it is to pray and how we can pray. And so... Uh, I, I just want you to be encouraged. So the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at different prayers, uh, events, things that were happening in the lives of those that prayed. And especially today, uh, we're going to look at Jonah. As you can see on the screen, the title of this message is, I'm ready. Y'all say that with me? I'm ready. You sound like it. That's good. All right. So what does it mean to be ready? Well, the first thing you better do each and every day before you say you're ready for the day is you better be prayed up. You better buckle your seatbelt and get prayed up because I don't know if you're aware of this, Christians, but we have an adversary, we have an enemy, and his name is the devil, the Satan, the serpent, and he has one purpose in life, and that's to devour your life. But you know what? I got good news for you, that we have the power of God who will tie up Satan, who in the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee. So that's the power of prayer. That's the power of speaking to God. You know, sometimes we have this thought that, you know, the most effective prayers are those that are done in the old King James Version. Thou art the Lord God in heaven. That, that, that doesn't have to make sense. In other words, our prayers are just speaking from our heart. It's speaking to God who cares, who knows what is happening in our lives. So let's get started this morning. Jonah chapter 1, we're going to read the, read the last verse of chapter 17. It says, Now the Lord had prepared, say prepared, yeah, God prepared a great fish. Now it doesn't say a whale, it says a great fish, to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. That's a long time to be in the belly of a fish. Because I don't know about you, but I can almost imagine what it smells like to be in the belly of a fish. I can almost tell you what it looks like. I, I can be, I'm not going to be very descriptive, but you can get the picture of what you imagine it would be like. So I think now is a good time to get a little context. What's happening? I, 
If, if you've been in church at least one week of your life, you know who Jonah is. He's the fellow that God called and spoke to Jonah to say, go and preach to Nineveh. And Jonah, we see a man of God says, uh-uh, I'm not going to do it. Now, Jonah had a heart problem. He had a heart problem because he didn't like the Ninevites. He didn't like the Assyrians because they, they were mean, evil people. And all of a sudden, God is telling Jonah, I want you to go preach to these evil people, and I want you to preach the love and the forgiveness of God. And Jonah says, not going to do it. So, you know what he does? He runs from God. And he gets on a boat, and he goes south, and he keeps going south to the certain point that while they're out on the open waters, the waves and the storm were so outrageous that the people on the boat were thinking, what's going on? You know where Jonah's at? He's asleep. He's not, there's not a concern in the world. He knows what his mission is, is to get as far away from God as he can and try to get away from the purpose and the mission that God had for him. All of a sudden, the crew members, they woke Jonah up and says, you've got to get up. There is a storm, and we're going to have to start throwing some things over. So they started tossing some of their boxes and things that were on the ship, just throwing it over. And then finally, Jonah says, okay, guys, here's the problem. The problem is me. I'm running from God. What you need to do is you need to throw me over. And those guys did not want to do that. They did not want to throw him over. But then the, the boat started to crash and almost flip over. And they said, we have no other choice but to throw you over. They took Jonah and just chunked him into the water. And all of a sudden, the sea became like glass. And Jonah knew at that point, he was the problem. He was running from God. He was causing the chaos, not only in his life, but he was causing chaos in the lives of others. And so we come to verse 17. And the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah up. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Was it misery? I sure it was. I'm sure that was the darkest, loneliest time of Jonah's life. But what we're going to see now, we're going to go to chapter 2. And what we see in chapter 2 is the prayer that Jonah prayed when he was in the belly of the fish. It says, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly. And he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me out of the belly of Sheol, which is death. I cried, and you heard my voice. Folks, Jonah is crying out to God. He is captured in a place where he cannot go anywhere. God has him right where he wants him, and now Jonah is coming to his senses. He's coming to a point to where, what else can I do but cry out to the Lord? Folks, sometimes that's the best place to be in life. That no matter where you are in your walk with God, when you want to walk out of the will of God, God is going to place you in a place where you have nowhere else to go but to look up to Him. I know some people look at that as that's the worst thing that can happen, but let me tell you, sometimes that's the best thing to happen when we can only look up. And by the way, you know, we do have an adversary, the devil. He's trying to come after us. He's trying to destroy our lives. He's trying to devour those that he can, even Christians. But let me, let me tell you something. When, th this is how much power God has. When we are attacked by Satan, do you know what we get to do? We get to pray. And we get to turn to God. And, and as Christians, we turn to God and he's going to save us. He's going to redeem us. But listen, you can't run from God. There is no one you can pray to. There is no one that can save you from God. There is no one more powerful than God. So when you are in the will of God, guess what? You're in the best place you can be. Because Satan even has to flee. All right, verse 3. For you cast me into the deep, 
into the heart of the seas. Now, wasn't it the men on the ship that cast him over? But what Jonah's praying is, Lord, it was you. It was you that cast me into the deep waters. It was you that put me into the heart of the seas and the flood surrounded me. I was sinking deep in sin and all your billows and your waves passed me over. I was about to die. He says, I was in the middle of the ocean. I was sinking. I was deep in the seas. And then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. He says, I thought, I thought to myself, that's the best place to be is so far from God that he doesn't have to look at me. I won't have any guilt. I won't have any suffering. But all of a sudden, he says, I have to look again toward your holy temple. I mean, here he is sinking deep, deep down into the water. And he's looking up and he's praying. The waters surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. What a descriptive narrative this is. Jonah is praying and he's saying, man, I was deep within the waters. Seaweed was wrapped all around my head. I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. Verse 6, I went down to the moorings of the mountains. I was so deep into the water. The earth and its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought my life from the pit. Oh, Lord, my God. You know what Jonah's doing is he's rehearsing in his mind. He's praying and he's rehearsing what has happened, what has taken place in his life. But at the end right here, verse 6, you have brought me up from the pit. You have brought me from the lowest of lows that I put myself in. And you brought me up when my soul fainted within me. He says, there's nothing else I can do. I remembered the Lord. And my prayer, my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. That holy temple's into heaven where God is sitting on his throne. He says, I may have been deep, deep down in the pit, but as far as the heavens are, God heard my cry. God heard my prayer. In verse 8, those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. He says, I know who you are, God. I'm not like the heathen that worship those false idols. I'm not one of those. I worship you. I know who you are. I praise your name. Watch this, verse 9. But I will sacrifice to you with my voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah on the dry land. There was something about this prayer. There was something about the heart of Jonah that got God's attention. There was something that happened from the time that God had prepared the fish in verse 17 to the fish that vomited him up in chapter 2, verse 10. There's something that happened, and if you're somebody like me, I want to know what it was. I want to know what was said, what was done, what got God's attention, what got God to say, okay, I prepared a fish to swallow you up, and now this event happened, and now it's going to vomit you up three days later. I want to know what happened, because there's been times I've been in a pit, there's been times when I've been really, really low. There's been times when I'm crying out to God and I'm wondering, God, are you even hearing me pray? Are you even hearing my cries? Are you even aware of what's happening in my life? But God is fully aware of what's happening. God knows what's happening in your life. And He wants to do something about it. So listen, you may want to run from God, but I promise you, that's not the safest thing to do. Because if you run from God, something's going to swallow you up. It may be a fish. It may be a Baptist church on, on, on this parkway right here. It may be a pastor just going to just reach out and swallow you up because we know what's best for you. Amen? You can run from God, but I promise you, as long as you're running and you're outside the will of God, it's going to be chaotic. 
you're not going to have peace. You're going to have something happen in your life, and you're going to come to your senses one day and say, like, Lord, what do I need to do? What do I need to do to get back into your presence? What must I do? I want to help you today. I want to show you three things, how we can be reunited into the presence of God. Amen? Don't you want to live in the presence of God? Don't you want to live in the peace of God? What would it be like if everything was just perfect? No chaos, no bill collectors, no insurance people calling, have you renewed your warranty on your car? I mean, come on. That would be heaven, right? Let's take a look. Number one, let's take a look at the place of prayer. You know, for some Christians, some people, we think that the place of prayer is sometimes the worship center, the sanctuary. But let me tell you, the place of prayer for Jonah was in the belly of the fish. That it, it got him to that place. That the only thing he, do, he could do is cry out to God. What we don't see in chapter 1, we don't see Jonah praying to God, God, I, I, you know what? I don't know if I really want to go serve you or not. I don't know if I really want to go preach for you or not. We don't even see him praying about it before he made that decision. He made a harsh decision to say no. And he deliberately ran outside of the will of God. And let me tell you, that's a dangerous place to be. So dangerous that sometimes you don't even realize that you're walking outside of the will of God. And the reason why is because you didn't begin with prayer. And that was Jonah's number one fault. He didn't begin with prayer. He didn't begin by praising God. God, you have given me a word to preach. You have given me redemption in my life that I can go and preach it to other people. That's not what he wanted. Instead, he wanted to preach judgment. He wanted to preach destruction. But God says, you're not the man for it. I want you to go and preach redemption, forgiveness, and mercy. And Jonah says, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. So, what is the place of prayer? Well, we saw in Jonah chapter 1, verse 17, God prepared a great fish. But in chapter 2, verse 1, we see that Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the fish's belly. Now, you're reading in English, your Bibles, you're seeing this on screen in the language that we call English. And what we did is we missed something. What happens, and I love this, by the way, is that when you really want to dig into Scripture, you really want to dig to a deeper meaning, and it's going to take some time, if you go back and you research the word for fish in the Hebrew language, in verse 17 of chapter 1, there is a word for the fish in Hebrew that is dog, D-A-G, okay? That's the word for fish. And D-A-G is a masculine form of the word, okay? When we come to chapter 2, verse 1, and you look at the Hebrew word for the fish's belly, something changes. It's now daga, D-A-G-A-H. Now it's a female fish. We went from chapter 1 having a male fish to chapter 2 having a female fish. And scholars say, well, there was a discrepancy in the text. There was, there was an error. But that's not the case. This is where it gets good. When you take a look at what's happening in Jonah's life, he is swallowed up by this fish. He is swallowed up and he's in the belly of this fish for three days and three nights. That word for belly is intestines. It's the gut. That's where he began. But, whoa, watch this. In chapter 2, verse 1, something changes. Something miraculously changes. He goes from the gut of a male fish to the womb of a female fish. In other words, y'all didn't get it. In other words, he went from destruction to development. He went from being destroyed, eat up, broken down, and God placed him in the arms of a security, a safe place to grow up. And it happened within one verse. It happened when Jonah figured out 
the place where he was. And when he started developing into a new person, then things became right. Then he saw the light of who Jesus is. So right here we see in, in chapter 2, verse 1, he's in a new stage of life. He's in a place now where he's going to be developed. He's going to be nourished. And by the time we get to the end of chapter 2, it's not that he was vomited. That's what the word says. But he was delivered. He was delivered on dry ground. He was delivered into a safe place. It all began because he was thrown overboard. It all began because he was running from God. But there was a time that God says, I'm going to prepare this fish. And what some people think that is a place of destruction, actually what God says, this is going to be a good time for you, Jonah. This is going to be a time for you to learn. It's going to be a time for you to develop. And through the events that happened in Jonah's life, watch this. When you get to chapter 3 and over to chapter 4, he's now given another opportunity to go and preach and what he does, he goes and he preaches the mercy of God. You know why? Because now he has a testimony. He has a testimony of where he used to be. But now he's been delivered in something new, something great. And now he can go preach the mercy of God. Amen? Number two, not only do we see the place of prayer in this, in this chapter, but now we see the purpose of prayer. I was asked a question a few weeks ago by a stranger that I met. And, and it really wasn't a question. It was more of a statement. He says, I, I don't know the purpose. I don't know the purpose for serving a God. I don't know the purpose for praying to a God. You know, there's a lot of people in our world that are like that. There's a lot of people walking around, and maybe even in our lives, that they don't understand the true purpose of praying. And folks, I want to stop right now and say this. If we as a church, if we as Christians don't drop to our knees and pray and humble ourselves like the Word of God says, ain't nothing going to change. But until we, as the children of God, as the church of God, fall down and pray, and seek God's face, then we'll see a change. And I know this upsets a lot of people, but half the time, most of the time in our life, the reason why we're having problems in our life is because we haven't fallen to our knees in prayer. We have left God out of it. And folks, I want to invite you in the next few weeks to invite God back in, to fall to your knees and pray, to begin each and every day with prayer. I promise you, We'll have testimonies about how good God is, about how great God is because of our prayer to Him. Now, did God change the fish? No, He prepared that fish. What happened is when Jonah prayed, it changed who he was. It changed his perspective of where he was. So that place of prayer, it changed his world. And I promise you, church, if we would consider the power of prayer, it'll change our world. It'll change our personal world, and it'll change our global world. Don't we need to seek God first? We need to seek His ways, and we need to honor Him. So the purpose of prayer number two, look back at verse 9. And this, this is the prayer. This is an out, astonishing statement that he makes right here. Verse 9. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. Now, do you remember what happened in verse 10? He was vomited up. He was delivered out of the belly. Verse 9 came before verse 10. So in other words, Jonah was already praising God. Jonah was already thanking God. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done to me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for letting me not die. Thank you for bringing me up out of the pit. That's what changed his heart because he's praying and he's seeing who he is. You see, God, y'all aren't getting this this morning. I can see it on your face. God does not want us to be happy. He's not concerned about our happiness. 
He's more concerned about our holiness. He wants us to be more holy than we are happy. And for some reason, the, 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 the church today, we just want to be happy. And, and, and you know, sometimes that, that's kind of my attitude as a pastor. I just want to make everybody happy. I'm tired of everybody complaining. I'm tired of everybody grumping and moaning. I just want to make everybody happy. It doesn't work, though, does it? you got experience in that. When we think about the happiness compared to the holiness, I'm not talking about your wife, by the way. I don't know why you had that thought. I was reading your mind. I saw her on the back row. When we think about God's holiness compared to our happiness, there's no comparison. I would rather be the most miserable person here on earth and be the most holiest before God Almighty. Because what happens when we want to start seeking happiness, we're like Jonah in the very beginning. We just want to take a vacation. God tells us to go north. No, God, I want to be happy. I want to go south. I want to go to Florida where it's nice, like down there in Pensacola somewhere. You know, so when we, when we go down to Florida and we go down to where it's vacation time, God's saying, what are you doing? I called you to go over here and, and show these people who I am. Oh, God, I can show these people in Florida who you are. It's not where I called you. It's not where I want you to be. And so, you know, you can read on what happens in the book of Jonah. He's given another opportunity. He's given another opportunity to go. This time, he didn't say no. He said, let's go. He says, I'm ready. I'm ready to do the will of God. I'm ready to do the work of God. I don't want to be in this pit anymore. I don't want to be in this place anymore. I want to be in your presence. I want to be in your peace. I want to have good understanding of what the Holy Spirit's doing through me. But it took prayer. And God took Jonah to the place to where all he could do is pray. Folks, I don't know if you've ever been there, but I've been there. I've been there. In fact, I've been there many a times. In fact, it was Jonah. It was a message about Jonah running from God that I finally surrendered my life to the ministry of preaching. If it wasn't for this young 20-something-year-old preacher staring at a congregation on a Sunday night, preaching his heart out that you are running from God. Listen, I was right where you were sitting. I was like, God, you've got my attention now. Because I knew at 16 that God had called me to preach. I knew that God was calling me. I said, uh-uh, I'm not going to be like the rest of those preachers. They're boring. They're poor. They don't have any money. They, they're, a preacher walks in the room and everybody scatters. It's like a funeral director. You know, somebody walks in a room, it's like, everybody leaves. That's not a good profession to be in. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to be anything else. And I started working different jobs, and guess what? I was miserable on every job. Miserable, miserable, miserable. I can't take this until I was told to my face, you are Jonah and you're running from God. And I couldn't help but just to break down to my knees and tell my wife that I was just married to for about six months, oh, by the way, I'm called to the ministry, and we're going to serve God. And she's like, do what? And that's how it happened. If it wasn't for somebody preaching, don't run from God. And until you're in that moment, you know what God can deliver you from. But right here in verse 9, we see Jonah already giving praise of thanksgiving to God before he's ever delivered. In other words, he's already praising God. He's already thanking God for what he's going to do because Jonah knows I've got my life right again. I've got my act straight. I've got back into a holy position again. I've come to a, a place of prayer. I know who I am before God Almighty. I know what God's purpose is for my life. I know what he wants from me. God, thank you for not letting me die. And Jonah knew he's going to have another opportunity. Aren't you glad that we serve a God of new opportunities? 
Because there, there's a couple of you, you've had your second chance, but I promise you, I, I'm living like in the 50th chance. I, I'm living down there where, God, it's a new day. I just need a whole other chance. I just need a new day, a new chance to make things right. But here we see the purpose of prayer. The purpose was to praise God. The purpose was to give honor and glory to God for who He is. And when we, in our deepest pits, in our deepest moments in darkness of life, can honestly consider, thank you, Lord. Thank you for putting me in this place right now. That gets God's attention. Because you're going to praise Him in the lowest, and you're going to praise Him on the highest. You're going to praise Him when you're in the pit, and you're going to praise Him when you're in the palace. You're going to praise Him when things are bad, and you're going to praise Him when things are good. And God smiles upon that. You want to get God's attention? You come in here on a Sunday morning, and you start clapping your hands, raising your hands, and singing praise to God, and you see what happens. You start watching the change in your life. You want to get, out of, you want to get the chaos and, 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 the, and the craziness out of your life? You start getting to your knees and start praying to God, saying, Deliver me. I thank you for delivering me in advance. I thank you for what you're going to do. And you watch what happens. God's not going to change himself, but he'll change you. And he'll change the circumstance. He changed a male fish to a female fish within a matter of just a couple of words. It happened right here. And then the purpose of prayer, we've got to give thanksgiving. Not just the third uh, Thursday of November when it's Thanksgiving Day. We, we, we thank him every day. And I love what Tim was saying about here I am to worship. This song is just a, a thank you to God. Thank you for what you've done for me. And here I am to worship. All right, number three. We see the power of prayer. We see the power of prayer. Verse 10, so the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. I love this verse right here because this is the God that we serve. This is the God who says, I have a plan and a purpose for you. You have experienced my power. You have spoken in my name. You have looked up to me as the master of your life, the Lord of lords and the king of kings, and now I have you back on mission. I have you set forth to go and to preach. Boy, don't you know he was walking the streets of Nineveh saying, you better turn from your wicked ways. You better seek the God from the heavens, because he's going to destroy you in 40 days. I wonder, I really do, I, I wonder, when he got vomited out of this fish, and he spewed up, that word for vomited means to spew. When he was spewed up, I'm sure that seaweed still wrapped around his head. I'm sure there's some stinky stuff still on him. And I bet he had this thought, you know what? I'm not even going to take a bath. I'm just going to go like I am. And here he is walking the streets. And boy, don't you know he got some attention. Who's that guy? Ugh. What, what is he doing? And he's walking the streets saying, The Lord, the God in heavens, he's our God. He's our God. And you need to turn from your wicked ways. He's going to destroy you in 40 days. And with that message and with that tone that he was in, God delivered him into a new person. In other words, he had in his mind, see, he wanted to go preach judgment, destruction, but now since he was delivered, he had a testimony. He could tell them, he had a visual, I have been delivered from the fish's belly. I have been brought forth because I tried to run from God. And you can run, but you can't hide from God. He's going to do what God's going to do. Now, we can get on board with it, or we can be cast into the pits. I don't know about you, church, but I'm tired of living in the pits. I'm tired of living in the chaos. I want to live in the peace of God, in the presence of God. I want to witness the great things of God. And it's going to happen with the power of prayer. The power of prayer. The reason why we don't believe in the power of prayer as Christians is because some of us have never witnessed the true power of prayer. In other words, we've never truly witnessed praying over somebody to the point to where they're almost going to die. And then they go to the doctor and the doctor says, I don't know what happened. I, I, I don't know what happened. That cancer is gone. I can tell you what happened. It was the power of prayer. 
It was the power of God's people coming together and praying in one name, in one God, and that is the name of Jesus Christ who can save nations, who can heal people of their diseases, who can give the sight back to the blind, who can give the the strength in their legs of those that are paralyzed, who will give the hearing back to those that are deaf, that can heal the people of their diseases of leprosy and let them walk in newness of Christ again. Aren't you glad that we serve Jesus Christ? Because He can do all things. He's going to do all things. I know what you're thinking. You're probably like some of the critics. You're thinking, oh, this story in Jonah is all made up. It's just a fairy tale. It's just a fish story. You know how those fishermen are. They start catching a fish like this, and the next person, it was this big. And then the next person, it was so big, I couldn't even reel it in. Right? You know those fishermen. But you know what? Jesus, in Matthew chapter 12, referred to Jonah. The Pharisees and the scribes, they were saying, we need to see a sign. We want to see a sign that you are the Messiah. He goes, you know what? You don't deserve a sign. But if you want a sign, you've already got it. Just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish. See, he quoted Jonah chapter 1, verse 17. Just as that happened, that's your sign. I will be in the earth three days and three nights. And folks, when he busted out of the grave on Easter Sunday... Those people that were looking for a sign, they saw the sign. They saw Jesus who came back alive. And folks, we may not see Jesus face to face, but I promise you there's going to be a day when those clouds are going to break and Jesus is going to be dropping down from heaven and he's going to call the saints. We call that the rapture. He's going to call the saints home and we're going to see him face to face. We're going to see Jesus for who he is. And we're going to see some things that are just like, Lord, I I, I didn't know that this was even possible. And our eyes are going to be opened. Our ears are going to be able to listen to the things that God wanted us to see and to hear. And folks, if we just get to the point today to say, Lord, I surrender to you. I surrender my heart to you. I surrender my mind to you. I promise you, God will show you things, some miraculous things that can take place that you didn't think could ever take place. But I promise you, we serve a God who wants, desires, and is pleasured by giving us good things. But it's just like a child. If you want to walk out, if you want to go your separate way, live your own life, He's going to do something to draw you back. You see, when you're a part of God's family, He's not going to let you go very far. He's going to swallow you up. It's not going to be good. I can save you some of that heartache. I can go ahead and save you because I know what's going to happen. By Tuesday morning, somebody's going to call me. Pastor, you're not going to believe what's happened. Let me guess, you got swallowed up. I tried to preach about it. I tried to warn you. But that's, that's how it happens. That's how it happens. But I won't do that. I'm going to say, listen, God's preparing you. God's going to deliver you. And God's got a purpose for you. And we all need to know that. That just because you haven't been specifically called to preach doesn't mean that you don't go out and tell somebody about Jesus. That you don't tell somebody that you have a testimony of how God saved you. How God delivered you. That's our calling as a Christian. That's what we're supposed to be doing each and every day. So if you're going to run from that, Hey, I promise you, you you may get in your car and start it up, and the steering may not even work. Oh, wait, I mean, I got your number this morning, Julie, to listen. I'm going to take this car for for example. Sometimes things happen. Maybe it's a delay. Maybe that car didn't steer, start, whatever, because God was protecting her. Maybe certain things were happening in life and God had already prepared that to happen because that's the God that we serve. But you know what? In her heart, because she's already preached a sermon up here, in her heart she says, I will serve the Lord. I will come and serve the Lord. And God honored that. And God will honor that if that's your heart's desire.
Amen. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we're so thankful that we can turn to you, we can come to you. Father, we just pray right now that every person knows who Jesus Christ is. And they can honestly say, I'm ready. I'm ready for Jesus to come back. I'm ready to meet him if I were to die. I'm ready. I'm not running from God. I'm not trying to escape the things of God. I'm ready. I'm ready. So Jesus, help us now. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask the praise and worship team to come.